GM uses this kind of in and out type uh, network topology. So um, it's better that I show this to you on this diagram than the Mitchell diagram. So this would be the factory diagram for the communication network. Uh, top right says data link connector. So you see where it says six and 14? All right, so this is how we're talking through the network, right? Six and 14, then it goes through the electronic power steering control module next. And notice there's a 120 ohm uh, terminator in there. There's one of my terminating resistors that we mentioned. Then from there, it goes to the BCM. And then from there, I, I um, picked out the options this car has. We don't have a, um, a, a VCM or VCIM, a VICM on this model. So then we go from the BCM over this way to the electronic brake control module. And then on its way up, manual tranny and 2.0 liter engine. So neither of these two are us over this way up to the transmission control module. There's our guy, right? And then it ends at the ECM with another terminating resistor. So now I know where my two terminating resistors are, my 60 ohms. Remember to read 60 ohms, it has to go through the whole network, right? So my question to you is, do I need to check these comm lines at the TCM? Think about that. I'm gonna do it anyway, we're gonna see some interesting things, and we could say, yeah, you could check them. You're gonna see why we do. Go ahead, George. So, since we were still reading 60 ohms originally, wouldn't they all be good? Yes. So, you guys hear that? For me to read between six and 14, now this is where basic electrical comes in in Ohm's Law, where all you guys thought, I don't need to know that. I don't need to know math. Guess what? To make this make sense, Yes, you do. Two resistors in parallel, measured, 120, 120, 60. It, it, those comm lines are good. I don't need to check it. What else tells me I didn't need to check these comm lines? Something else we did too, when we first started. We scanned all the modules. The engine computer's talking to me. How does the engine computer talk through this network? So this is the whole in and out part that GM does. Look at the ECM, the ECM's talking on these two lines. What does it have to travel through to talk to me over here at the data link connector? What's that module right there? Transmission. My transmission control module. So guess what I don't need to check? The comm lines. Does that make sense? That's just basic stuff. Now, I added a little bit here because some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, the TCM's bad here, it's not talking. Wouldn't that interrupt the flow of communication? Great thought process, I like that. But what you don't know how GM does this, I just drew a little generic picture in here. That's how it's wired. See the little chip I have in the middle, that comm chip? How do they make that? Lots of cool stuff out there on that. We're not gonna spend time on that. That's not important right now. What's important is you see the pass through. Yes, sir. So my question on like, uh, cause we're on the topic of GMs. Like I've seen like some terrains and equinoxes where they've had like trans, like just communication issues to where like, cause they weren't like wired to one CAN bus. It was like all wired at once. So if one module went bad, like everything else did. Yes, yes, but define bad. Define bad module. Like one module does not that, get power. Yeah, okay, so my, that was kind of a rhetorical question, meaning like bad could be something's wrong with that board, but because of, you see the way I drew that? Yeah. There's a pass through, there's a direct connection of those top two wires. There's a direct connection of these top two wires to these bottom two wires. This TCM can be completely bad and I can still talk to everything else. However, if the chip fails and shorts, I lose everything. That means I'm up here over in the DLC, I can't talk to any module on this network. If that chip fails and shorts, I can't talk to anything, nothing. Complete no comm to, to all these modules. Does that kind of answer? That's what I mean by define bad is how did it fail?
So what you're talking to about is exactly that, say a shorted transmission control module pulling down the network. Where we would then, when we started this, when we did that 60 ohm measurement, how huge would that be in that scenario? Because what are we gonna see? We're not gonna see communication signals because it's all shorted out, but what we're gonna see with that resistance measurement is our resistance is off. And then we know we have a short somewhere in that network and then we, or an open and we continue from there. Make sense? If it's an open in, in this scenario, let's say, let's say we have an open in the TCM, everything else will talk on this except the TCM and the ECM because of the way the topology is. Not all cars are like this. This is GM. Did I need to do this? Did I need to check this comm line? Which is what I'm doing. Do I need to check this comm line? I'm on the first one up here. Tan, tan black, can negative, doesn't really matter. I'm checking them both. I don't care can high, can low at this point. I just wanna see signals here. So I'm checking it. I didn't really need to do this, but I see something that is different, that I don't like. And remember the recessive dominant conversation? When there's no signal compared to when there is a signal, um, when there is a signal, it's dominant, when there is not, is recessive. And in this video, I kept talking about, Caleb, you'll, you'll remember this, I kept calling it nominal voltage, like the whole time. Now I know the right word. From this point on, I'll call it what it is. Our recessive state is, you see that number right there? I know it's covered, it's four volts. What should it be? Just basics of what we learned today, it should be two and a half, right? If I'm on can, low, it should be two, um, one and a half to two and a half. And you see there's zero, there's two, it looks like one and a half at the bottom. That part looks right. The dominant part looks right. The recessive part does not. And I'm like, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, at this point in this video, I wasn't thinking about the things we're talking about. I really wasn't. I wasn't thinking about, I can talk to the ECM. I don't even need to do these checks, right? I mean, it's basically, time to call a module unless I missed another power feed, okay? But no, we need to check references too. But I don't like this. In the video, I don't like this. I'm like, wait, that's not what I saw at the data link connector. And then, so I'm just zooming in on this a little bit more. There's some uh, scope stuff in here. Uh, again, encourage you guys to watch the scope lessons I have. This is where it's really important too on sample rate and, and time base and uh, trigger and all of that. But basically I'm manipulating my scope to see this signal a little bit more and this is what it looks like. That is one weird looking signal. That looks nothing like what we saw early on. And then I look at the other one moving over to can high and I see that same four volt recessive state. Kind of tough to see that the bottom line of that's two and a half. I think Caleb did a good job in his edits for me for this part. Yeah, he did. That's the one and a half to two and a half. That looks right. Then he highlighted the two and a half to three and a half for can high. And then he did one better. And I started talking about these nominal. What's that part called? The flat line, which I just learned for this class. First time in my life. I sound really smart. I used AI and I, I asked it some information about these signals. Yes, son. Are you confident that you're using that term right? I'm not. I could be wrong, <laughs> right? I think so. I've heard recessive and dominant before when I hear really smart people in classes I've gone to and I have no idea what they're talking about and I, I don't wanna ask because I feel stupid. I'm pretty confident that that is the recessive state. You sound smarter. I do sound smarter, don't I? <laughs> But where should it be? See the other red line you see is two and a half. That's where we should be. What's going on here? Why did I not see this at the data link connector? What am I doing differently here that I didn't do at the data link connector? 